in the Facebook group. I'll go and have a look. And wpbuilds.com forward slash. I'll go and have coffee. Do... Yep, we're live. Brilliant. Right, I'm going to mute mute the tabs. So I don't want to be making lots of noise. Hello. Hello. I don't know if you can see me. Hopefully you can. I am. Um, I'm playing with a new bit of software this week. Uh, previously, I've been using a Mac app called Ecamm. And because Paul was on the call yes, uh, last week, uh, by the way, thank you so much, Paul. That was greatly appreciated. Very, very cool. Um, we had to come up with an alternative solution because the app I was using had a Mac uh, only. Um, well, you could only install it on a Mac. So trying something new out, rather liking the look of it so far. But it does mean that I'm probably going to mess things up. However, all that being said, I'm uh, really delighted to have uh, some guests on. I've got two, two new guests on uh, today, and I'm going to get them to introduce themselves one at a time. But first of all, just down there, down below me, we've got Paul Lacey. Hi, Paul. Give us your quick elevator pitch. Okay. I'm Paul from the Dickie Bird Studio, and I'm also a brand ambassador for RunCloud. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Now, over here, I think, yeah, got it right, even on the new setup, we've got Vlad, Vlad from Pixel Grade. Um, do you want to just tell us um, who you are, what your company does, and so on and so forth, Vlad? Uh, you want the short version or the, the long one? Go for the short one. We'll have the short, long one short, at the end. Short. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a co-founder uh, co of Pixel Grade. I'm a back-end developer. We develop... Uh, premium WordPress themes for about seven years now. We love everything about design and we proud ourselves to be design driven. We strive to be. We, we've been involved in WordPress for probably 10 years now, me and my brother, the other co-founder. So that's about it. Okay. Uh, well yeah, well, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. Um, it's always nice to get new faces. Now, this this is not a new face to me. Um, I've met Andrew several times, but Andrew is <coughs> over there. Andrew, Andrew Palmer. Um, I won't tell you where you're from. You can do all that yourself. Well, I'm Andrew Palmer, and I'm from Elegant Marketplace, which is a theme store for Divi Elementor, and we're moving into WordPress plugins and themes as well, which is great. Uh, and also page builder cloud that allows people to save any kind of page builder, virtually any kind of page builder that's out there, certainly the most popular ones, uh, save your layouts to the cloud and then select them and reuse them in any WordPress install using that particular page builder. My aim in life is to make developers' lives easier. And that's why I've got Elegant Marketplace and Page Builder Cloud as well. That's it. And I'm still in St. Louis after WordCamp. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a bit croaky. It's a shame, actually. I sort of throw these news articles together, um, usually on a Friday so that I can have the weekend free. So all of the WordCamp um, US news has kind of passed me by this week. And, and no doubt this time next week we'll be talking about it and I'll be a whole week behind. But um, just very quickly, were there any highlights from your experience at WordCamp US? Was it was it worth attending from your point of view? Did you oh, it's definitely it? worth attending. I think yeah. if you're into WordPress in any kind of way, whether you're a theme um, store person like me or whether you're a web developer like me or a web, web producer, if you like, like me, then you've got to take part in the community. You've got to contribute to the community. And one of the ways you can contribute is just by attending a WordCamp. And yes, it's I'm UK based and St. Louis is miles away, you know, 15 hour travel and time differences and everything. But really the people that you can connect with are, they become lifelong friends. They literally do, you know, because as soon as you meet someone in person, you get time to talk to them. And because it's over a two or three day period, you get to attend parties and you have a couple of drinks with them and you have some fun and whatever it is. And, and you've got sub parties as well. You know, we had people back to the apartment and, um, you know, just made, as I say, make, make friends for certainly for the next few years, you know, but it really is BFFs forever. And once, once the WordPress community get together in the physical, then it's just, it's party time and learning about what other people are doing. You know, it's, it's crazy what's going on in the WordPress ecosphere at the moment. So yeah, it's definitely worth 
attending. And if you can't do a WordCamp, do a meetup, you know, and stay yeah. connected. Certainly in the UK, there's a lot of those. Um, yeah. Just so that we know, um, Vlad was just telling me that he's from Romania. Do you have a sort of str um, thriving, healthy WordPress community in, in Romania, WordCamps, meetups, and all that kind of stuff? Mm, we have a WordCamp at Bucharest, but uh, not not uh, much else. We, I believe, I, I suspect, we have a thriving community of developers, we, but uh, most of us are, are undercover. So keeping a low key, lots of freelancers that are doing their thing. So the, the part of the community is not very developed so or visible. Okay. Well, you know, SiteGround, the host is uh, Romanian. Hmm. No, it's from Bulgaria. It's Bulgaria. It's Bulgaria. Yeah. Sorry, okay, okay, I missed that. So Our yeah, I, met up, I met up with them, and I, I actually said they're from Romania, but they use Romanian developers. That's what I, that's what I meant to for, say. For sure, for sure. And support yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Anyway, this is really nice. Just uh, I'm playing with this new technology, <clears> so do forgive me, but I'm going to try and make my screen go. Yeah, there we go. That's great. So a couple of things before we begin. Um, as always, if you go to the archives section here and you click on podcast archives, <laughs> sorry, news archives, you'll get taken to this news page. And it's always the, the top left one that we're talking about. So if you click on that, you'll be taken to this page where you can see what it is we're talking about and follow through um, on some of the articles. But I don't want to keep that up because I'd rather that we were able to see what we were all doing instead. So very quickly, um, we'll go through some of these. Some of the people on today have decided to sort of take some of these stories and run with them a little bit more. But if not, I'll just whiz through uh, various bits and pieces. The first one is all about Word, uh, WordPress 5.3, Release Candidate 3. There's not a lot to say, a few bug fixes and so on and so forth. So I'm really not going to say much about that. But there is a really nice article on the kinster.com website. Um, I believe it's on Kinster. Is it on Kinster? Let me just check. No, it's not. It's on talkmag.io, which is a real nice summation of what it is that you should be expecting in WordPress 5.3. It's the second link down. I can actually just sort of show it to you if I do that. There we go. And um, it tells you everything that's coming in one nice, easy to consume piece of content. So I would definitely advise going to, going to check that out if you're at all worried about what 5.3 is bringing. I, I can't see anything that's scaring me or anything that's not going to make me click the update button. There's a lot in there, but I can't see anything which is going to, going to hold me off. Anything making you guys pause or evaluate whether you should all update all at once? No. no. Nope. I'm, no, I'm never worried. I mean, one of the things that a lot of managed hosts do is delay the update until they yeah. think they're ready. You know, yeah. the, the flywheels and the WP engines of this world. So I'm never really worried about WordPress updating or setting it to auto update um, because there's nothing really. I'm more worried for people that manage their own website that aren't developers and cut and don't know how to roll back and, and stuff like that. So it's always better if you've got worries about it to sort of get in touch with a, vet, a developer or something and say, you know, look after my site. You know, this is why we like to have maintenance plans, isn't it? Yeah, we've got an article later by um, which Vlad has uh, injected into it from Heather Burns, which is about something similar, which is really interesting. But um, we'll just press on because, you know, WordPress 5.3, it's been it's been mooted for a long time. But it should be out, I think, this time next week, 12th of November, if memory serves um but let's let's crack on the next one is all about wordcamp 20 let me get that nice view of us and this yeah that's it that's nice um we've got wordcamp 2020 um they're calling for workshop speakers i didn't i was at wordcamp in berlin but i didn't really realize this was a whole new sort of track approach if you go to a wordcamp i don't know if they had this in wordcamp us there's this um there's this track called workshops where instead of going and listening to somebody talk at you lecture style um you go and rather like this picture demonstrates that you can <coughs> see the screen you go and you can, it's like interactive you know you set up with things to do and achieve and try out and um if you want to do that at wordcamp europe in uh, porto in 2020 then now is the time to apply um I, i'm assuming that you three are going to apply to uh, you know all leader workshop of course yeah uh, i'm going mainly for for the golf <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm going for, of course, I'm going for. Oh, you're not. You are mainly going for the golf. Yeah, I am. Um, the <laughs> workshops in in US were pretty 
well, they were very well attended. So that's why I think they're focusing on this. And also, some of us are shy. You know, you'll see people wandering around and looking around, going to the sponsors' booths and attending the workshops and then sitting down at the desk or sitting down at tables for lunch. And there's there's very little interaction. So what these workshops do um, is allow people to interact with each other and then they can go off and have lunch and a bit of networking happens. So it, it kind of brings people together in a, a learning environment, which is really cool because once you once you start learning something, you want to have a chat with your peers, you know, the same people that were in the workshops. And, and again, that's how you build those friendships and those connections in, in WordCamp because it's, yeah. it's vast and it's scary. You know, if you're walking into this big room and there's thousands of people there, I mean, who do you, who do you choose to talk to if you don't actually know anyone? That's yeah, the key. That's point. yeah. So the workshops are a great idea. Yeah, they're going to be in ninety minute and which is you know fairly long, but also one hundred and eighty minutes. So real deep dive <laughs> sessions. And yeah, here's the here's the list of what they're looking for. If you feel that you can tick any of these boxes: accessibility, business development, content design, UX. Peacher, come on. Um, development, security, search engine. Well, SEO, and then starting out with WordPress. Basically, go and fill out whatever form appears when you tick that box. Uh, that's what you need to do. So, Paul, you're going to be going to WordCamp Europe. Vlad, you're going to be going to WordCamp Europe in yes, okay. I'm not sure. I, I went to Berlin, to Belgrade, but uh, I would like to see Porto. So that's an incentive. But uh, I'll wait and, wait and see. I think it's a bit of a wait and see for me as well, because I don't know whether I'm actually going to make it because I'm cycling there. And um, I, don't know, I don't know if I'm actually, you know, that's quite a long way. Um, Come on, Nathan, that's not the spirit. Of course but, you're going to be there. Yeah, it's not the spirit. It might be the reality, though. Um, all right, let's move on because we don't want to keep talking about that. But this is quite an interesting one. I, I, don't, um, I don't have a great deal of experience with Cloudways, but I know that a lot of our users do. Um, they've got this, this application performance monitoring feature um, whereby you can access a whole load more data on the back end about what's gone on. So you can get uh, APM traffic stuff, as you can see on here. I think it does, like, you know, if anything's gone wrong with PHP or any of those kind of things. All I've put this up for is really, if you're using Cloudways, go and check it out, really. Do you use Cloudways, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. I've got, um, tons, I've got probably about 10 servers with Cloudways and probably about four now on, uh, on RunCloud. And so does this stuff does this stuff interest you or does it just it's like oh it I'll does that. it does but um, the one comment I would say just to feedback to Cloudways team if they oh um, <laughs> obviously they'll all be listening yeah uh, would would be the the main thing that I look at on Cloudways when I'm looking at uh, which server's got a problem is the CPU. So you can always kind of see, you know, the spike over a week or a day or 24 hours or, or, or a month. And you can see, right, this server's clearly struggling. I need to do something about giving it more power. And then what they've given us with this is the ability to more easily figure out which website on the server it is that's causing a problem. But it's got lots and lots of in-detail details. But, uh, but what I'd really like is just to be able to click into an application and see what exactly the, the spikes of that application CPU overall. So for instance, imagine like a graph that uh, showed the overall CPU of the server and which websites were spiking it at different points. So, you know, like a multi-layered uh, line, line graph. So at the moment, this is quite technical information. Uh, I don't think... I don't think it's quite as useful as being able, as, as quite as quick on the eye as being able to say, hey, this server's got a problem. It's spiking every five minutes. I think you'd have to go into each app and delve in quite deep. So no doubt, I think that will come. I think this is probably like a server logs um, reskin in a way uh, versus like the server itself showing the, the peaks and spikes of the RAM and the CPU. Because I think with the, the purpose of this is to figure out which application is causing a problem. What you can do with this, which is good, is that you can find out that if you did figure out which application had a problem, you could probably go and see what the problem was. So that's pretty cool. But it'd be nice to have something in the middle that just showed 
um, very visually and very quickly. Here's your server. It's spiking. It's this app. That was pretty exhaustive. <coughs> oh, that was very helpful. Um, Just Peach is listening. Quick... He's an ambassador for Rom Cloud. So, Vlad. Um, Paul, can I uh, ask you if they have some uh, integration specifically to WordPress or is just a general APM service? Uh, with Cloudways, they they do they are kind of targeted to a certain extent at WordPress users. You can you can install other apps on there as well, but whenever you um, set up a server, you create the app that you want and it'll install WordPress okay. for you and that sort of stuff. And it's got some integrations with WordPress in that if you change the primary domain in your server control panel for your application, it will do everything in the WordPress application as well. So it will do the find and okay. replacing in okay. the database. So it's quite it's quite tightly integrated with WordPress. I, I was curious if uh, the APM had some WordPress insights like uh, New Relic uh, introduced. New, New Relic is, New Relic is available months. on there, yeah. So okay. you can turn on New Relic in your server settings. Okay. And then you can access it. I think it's the free version of New Relic, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, but I think the problem was that a lot of the WordPress Cloudways users don't fully get New Relic. <laughs> I've, I've dived into New Relic, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong yeah. with my website. So this is probably a, like a, a more friendly version of New Relic, as far as I can tell. OK, thanks. So and that's to the update, anyway, to their um, to their platform, you know, tons of new menu items, lots and lots of things to do. And um, yeah, Peach is, Peach is here uh, in look, watching now if you want to connect with her and she'll probably be able to connect you with whoever it is you need to speak to. Paul, you're going to take the next one as well, which is, the, I think this is so good. This is such a good article. It's very rare that we do humor um, intentionally, but this is so funny. <laughs> And yet, we've all been through that. This is on the Elementor blog, and they have this thing called Hilarious Web Design Stories of Nightmare Clients. And some of these are just ridiculous. Do you want to talk us through your faves? Yeah, well, it's a Halloween-based article yeah. uh, that they've done. They've clearly put a lot of work into this. So it's, it's about nightmare clients. So I'll just read out a few of the headlines. And for each nightmare client, they give, um, and they give a really amazing animation for starters, yeah. a little brief sentence or two sentences about what it is. And then, for instance, a, an example of dialogue between the client and then what the designer's thinking. So some of the examples you've got is the case of the mad scientist uh, who just thinks that you can hocus pocus anything that they ever want. Uh, the attack of the movie website. I'm not sure what that one is. The abominable... That, that, that's the best one. With the, oh, movie. Yeah. <laughs> the abominable spont shrinker. <laughs> or obviously you could do that one the other way around. Invasion of the body exposers. I'm not sure what that <laughs> one is. Uh, there's the four-headed monster. And so there's there's a few of them on there. But, you know, um, before just going on about this article, I can just, the, the budget that's gone into this article, oh. it feels like they've got more budget for this article than most of my clients have for websites because the animations yep. on this are absolutely yep. amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, they have the elements. have a fantastic um, team just writing blog posts and doing content yeah. marketing. You know, they really yeah. believe in content marketing. I met up with them as well. I mean, Yoni was here as well, the, the, the oh, actual yeah. founder, um, and you know, the stand was pretty big at um, uh, WordCamp, and you know, they pay they pay attention to what people want really within the blog content, and this is it's a fun. That they're a very fun um, business, you know. They just want to have fun, which is great. But they also want to be serious in, in fact, giving people what they think they need. Um, but yeah, they, they, their content marketing pe um, department is something like you know, maybe even eight people or something. They've got wow. their own videographer, their own animator, their own graphics guy, yeah. that, and girl, and their own um, three bloggers. I think you know. So it's. It's it's pretty intense. Um, they really believe in content marketing, and why not? We do. Yeah, yeah. It, it is phenomenal though, because the stuff that they come out with now, I believe to be you know industry best of class. You know, they yeah. are nothing goes out that isn't shiny, 
and polished. You know, all of it looks amazing. All of it looks like it's filmed in a proper studio. Um, they've well, they've got the budget, haven't they? And they're using it. And things like this, to me, just just smack of a company who are just killing it, who are just all over it. You know, they've got the time to write hysterical pieces and publish them just before Halloween, just knowing that it'll cause a giggle. There's, there's as far as I can see. There's very little of promotional stuff in here. There we go, tiny bit at the bottom where they try to get you to subscribe, but the rest of it is just purely for a bit of fun. And I just think that's fabulous. And they are really funny. I don't think I've done them justice. When you read them, I actually was going, <laughs> it's so shocking because they, they really <laughs> did I, ring bells. In yeah, 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 exactly. You know, they're uh, funny because they're true. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, thanks to the Elemental guys. You, you are you are people that, you know, your team is is to be looked up to in this regard without a doubt. So that's great. Yeah. You, um, you and Dave, Nathan, just in, Say your, again. in your previous uh, podcast, but one, uh, the one, Are We Leaking Clients? I think it was. Yeah. You and David mentioned, I think, Elemental about how they they absolutely know how to keep their customers re-engaged every week every week it doesn't matter but this article is, is so funny it's just it reminds me of when i was back in the dot-com days working for yeah. a dot-com magazine and there was editorial teams there just to create fun games and fun articles like we did the um just satire on everything and this is just brilliant this is what it reminds me of but yeah yeah but well it's done. Just, just great just a bit of fun but um very very much enjoyed reading those uh, articles now, Vlad, I don't know if you want to lead on this one, but um, I'll, I'll just very quickly explain it. But Vlad said that he would okay. maybe like to tell us more about this a chap called Jason Schuller, who had oh, back in the day something 72. What was it called? Press 75. Press 72. Or was it 75? 70, 70. Thank you so much. There, there it is. Look, press 75. He's yeah. um, he's he's gone a bit. Um, he's he's moving away from making themes i think for him at least that time has come and gone and he's launched this new thing called dsko which i suppose i could launch um i've actually signed up for it have you figured out what the point of this is yet vlad but it seems interesting i'm a little baffled i believe yep. it's a sort of a behance for i don't know freelancers in web development web design so what Behance wants to be for designers and visual artists. This wants to be for uh, small agencies, freelancers. That's my take on it. Yeah. Or, but I, I, I think he's still uh, trying to find the niche and yeah. the where to, to start with it. Yeah, but he um he makes the point in the article, doesn't he, that when he was uh, if you roll back the clock about I don't know eight let's say eight or nine years when he was one of the first movers on Theme Forest, yeah. you could basically just create a theme, put it on Theme Forest, and literally print some money, whether that was a lot or a little, you could actually make money by having a theme, and um, I'm sure you can speak to this. Those days have largely gone, I imagine. Sadly, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's trying to pivot and find something else. The reason I included it was just because I thought it was a okay. So it's a place where you go and you you basically put all of your social links and write a little bit about yourself. And so you get a little bit of a a place on the web. So for example, if we click on Block Labs, that's it. This is all you get. You get like a, a an image. You can put a video there. Um, and it's kind of like a place to say, here I am, I've got nowhere else to put anything, so I'll put it all on here. And you could, I don't know, hand it out on a business card with a with a, a QR code or something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure I quite understand the point of it, but what an interesting, what an interesting sort of WordPress front end. You know, you sign up, you don't even have to log in. You get a, like a unique token, which allows you to then go back to the website, fill your details up. So every time you want to go back and amend it, you have to go through the same process. I just thought it was interesting. And as he's clearly somebody who, in you know, in his day was a great mover and shaker, made some great themes. I actually bought several of his themes and installed them and tried to pretend to be YouTube. Oh, my goodness me. Who is that? <laughs> he's just oh. got out of bed and given me a hug. Oh, look, there he is. <laughs> like we say every week, that man is everywhere. Just a nightmare. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. It's amazing. Even on the days he's not on, he's on. It's been so Peleg, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, there you go. Just an interesting little aside from a guy who um, 
a guy. Can I just say something about that in 12 seconds? Yeah. It's ba- it is basically a business card for the web. You know, lots of people have tried to do these kind of things. What, like Vlad said, it's Behance, you know, LinkedIn are, are, are going to Behance. There's so many different ways that we try and get our name out there. You know, you've got Product Hunt, you've got Behance, you've got LinkedIn, you've got Facebook. And this is just a, another way, I think, to almost be a self-curation kind of advert, if you like. Yeah. And then down the line, my view is that he'll monetize that by giving his bigger, bigger profiles. That's that's what I think about this. I got asked to sign up to it last week, I think, and I was one, but I was on a plane. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's going to stop you. Um, yeah. I signed up for it, and it kind of feels to me like the exact sort of place that I will never go again. Now, I've signed exactly. up, yeah. all my links there, and unless there's a compelling reason to go back. But I thought it was worth mentioning just because of who 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 he is. Now, Paul, it's a free or backlink. It's a free backlink. It's a, well, okay, yeah, free backlink. Yeah, it's not a no follow as well. So all yeah. right, yeah, you've been. Yeah, yeah that's so that's where it's a backlink. Wow. Check you out, checking it all out. That's great. That's way more, way more efficient than me. Paul, do you want to take um now? I have to say, I haven't really read these next three pieces very in great depth because Vlad um brought them along, which I really like. Thanks, Vlad, for bringing yeah. in some new, interesting conversations. But um, he's brought an article today from the now. How am I going to get this over to that screen? I have no idea. How can I do that? Copy link. There we go, because this is an incognito tab and it's over on a Google Doc on another screen. Here we go. Um, Paul, did you want to talk about this? Or Vlad, do you want to talk about this? Why are, why are we looking at Morten's website? Morten Rand Hendrickson, we should say. Well, I can introduce it and then hand yeah. over to you, Vlad, if you like. Sure. So uh, thank you for putting this one in the list. I mean, this is this reminds me of, um, you know, when we watch the news or the media or whatever we're doing, we're, you know, we're interested in this for 24 hours, then we're interested in another thing. So in WordPress, there's a new theme or there's a new update or something like that. But in the background, you know, in the in the regular in the real world, you've got global warming and and major issues like that going on. That again get about twenty fours worth twenty four hours worth of coverage when they happen, and then it's back onto the celebrity whose wig fell off or something. Um, whereas, so in WordPress, we have this thing with um, you know the previous guests like Matt Medeiros uh, is always encouraging people to be critical of the project, critical of where things are going. And this is another massive name in WordPress, Morton Rand Hendrickson, Hendrickson, yep. sorry, who's who's been really well known for almost all the time that WordPress in, has been around, as a speaker and a and a very big contributor to the community. So he seems to be one of these people again that's also uh, spending a lot of his time and energy making sure that the under that the the origins of open source and the origins of what WordPress is supposed to be is upheld and it doesn't go off in different directions. And one of the main points he's making in the article so far as I understand is that, yeah, you can say this is just software and hey, if you don't like it, you can just fork it. But the problem is when you get to the point where people are within, you know, huge amounts, millions of people are in the community are saying things like, my job depends on the success of this particular version of the project. My skills are tied to this particular version of the project. Or people making a mass assumption, which is quite easy to make, that the project is too big or too dominant for a fork to ever work because we've had a fork that tried to happen and obviously we haven't really heard much about it since. And then also he goes on to say when the... The, the open source leader says statements like it's not this project is not a grain it's the soil that implies the single fork should become the infrastructure for everything it's just an underlying thing that a lot of us and i'm, I'm included in that just forget about from 99 percent of the time that there is something going on there is 300 million dollars going into automatic there are kind of deals made with automatic and godaddy for exclusive woocommerce uh, access to add-ons and stuff like that, and who knows what else is going on. And one of the points is is that if when this project gets this big, just saying, well, you can fork it if you don't like, it doesn't seem to work anymore because I don't think there's ever been a project like this that's gotten this big. So it, I think what Morton is saying is that can we start thinking a bit more open about the future of this? If we're looking at 85% of the whole web, we can't just say 85% of the whole web, hey, if you don't like it, you can just fork it. 
So that's my understanding of the article, and it's just a really good article. But he's clearly frustrated, and has been for a while. Yeah, yeah. I think um, one of the things that you need to watch is Open Dot Film. Go to Open Dot Film. It was Matt played it at, at his keynote um, at WordCamp. Um, it's thirteen minutes of um, kind of open discussion, including Matt. And Matt's great at swerving questions and kind of suggesting. And one of his biggest swerves is, well, if you don't like it, you can fork it. But there was also the guy that does, um, I'll remember it in a second, uh, but Matt and he had a Twitter kind of spat about, it's Ruby on Rails, the guy who does Ruby on Rails, had a the Twitter HH. spat about Matt's comment being taken. And I think everybody has taken Matt's comment out of context. And if you really want to hear the context of what Matt said, and I'm not defending him or, 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 or condoning what was said or whatever, but listen to the podcast that Matt and this guy from Ruby on Rails did. And it's a, it's a really, it's an hour of complete education of how to answer questions to the community without answering anything. You know, Matt's a politician. It's, it's as simple as that. And my, my view is, is WordPress, how can anything get too big? You know, we've got Microsoft, we've got Apple, we've got Facebook, we've got, all these things that are Google, you know, which are big and cumbersome and monolithic. And, you know, there's all sorts of user issues. There's all sorts of um, privacy control issues going out. And basically, the through governments across the world, the people are kind of saying, well, I need to be protected or I need to be, um, I need to actually be protected against the technology taking me too far, not just on privacy levels, but like you say, WordPress and, or any kind of app that gets out of hand, there has to be some kind of control mechanism within the industry, within its own um, organization. So I don't think WordPress or automatic, we have to try and separate WordPress and automatic. Um, picture just, just, uh, <laughs> It's uh, commented there and made me put me right off picture. Thanks. Um, we have to take WordPress and Automatic as separate entities and the entities within them. For instance, there's issues around privacy There's issue in WordPress. There's issues around accessibility, Gutenberg accessibility, Gutenberg um, and, and the whole WordPress is clear of, of privacy and uh, all the policies going around there. So. I don't think it's WordPress as a whole getting too big. I think it's units within WordPress getting too big and maybe just one or two people having control of that and not actually having control. So they've been given control, but they've lost control. And part of our job as the community is to say to these guys and girls and say, get your act together and make sure that you're doing your job properly so that we can do our job properly and we can contribute uh, in a valuable way. And there's not enough, any, there's not anyone brave enough, you know, apart from these guys to say that, to say, you're getting out of control. You have mechanisms within your own organizations and now $300 million to spend. Start, start doing some self-policing, if you like. My view, but you, I don't think you can get too big as a company. You can get too big as a as units within a company. There's too much control from different hierarchical um, structures within companies, not just WordPress. Oh, I've lost you. So let, let me uh, I'm carry on my from you. Okay, I might be a builder, but all I said was, um, Vlad, what were your thoughts? Sorry. Okay, uh, let me carry on from uh, Andrew. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I agree that it's not about the size of the company. Uh, by Silicon Valley standards, automatic is not huge. It's quite small, actually. So, but it's about the the power, and if you get too powerful, I think, and that that is where Morton uh, is. I, I believe is heading with the fact that uh, you can just fork it has become uh, I don't know like a fist in the mouth. Uh, used by Matt uh, all uh, all day long, S but uh, the, the the problem is that this is a developer view, a developer centric view, that it's about the code. At the end of the day, the WordPress code is not that 
big, not that great. Probably, I don't know, 10 guys could redo it in uh, a couple of months. So the code is not the problem. Is the, pr uh, the, the problem is that we, you have uh, a company, Automatic, that is holding a community hostage through code. So that's the issue because uh, I heard uh, the state of the world uh, that uh, Matt did on uh, WordCamp US. And uh, the numbers that were presented, like the number of contributors to Gutenberg or the core, the 1,000 plus uh, to the core, 450 to Gutenberg, were just plain wrong because any developer can go to GitHub and look at the Gutenberg repo and see the distribution of contributions. So we have about 40 automaticians that contribute 90% of the code. And of, out of those 40, four or five are way ahead. So the decision is not in the rest of 400 contributors to Gutenberg. It's in the, the hands of those 40 developers. So that that is why I believe that uh, we we should be more open and outspoken about this uh, hypocrisy, to to be frank, because uh, I, I I sense this uh, in the dot, dot, WordPress dot org team review team, where team authors barely have a saying in things. I don't know. That's that's been recently taken away, though. I mean, that's that, and that was taken away because of abuse. I think there's a, there's an article on WordPress.org of why that's why that's gone. So uh, know. it's uh, way more complicated than that. I, yeah. And I'm I'm not uh, saying that WordPress.org should be used only by I don't know businesses or big business or whatever. Uh, I'm saying that. Uh, there's a severe lack of clarity about making decisions, why we do something, why we don't do something. So, and in the end, in the uh, due to this lack of clarity, uh, the decision gets either uh, left behind or taken uh, behind closed doors. And that's a shame because everybody gets frustrated, doesn't understand, doesn't, can't plan, can't, uh, it's not predictable. And uh, I believe this is where the, the whole governance issue mm -hmm. is, is heading because people uh, need to know, need to have some sort of clarity, some sort of predictability where things are going. He did actually start the governance project, didn't he, with Rachel Cherry? Yeah, and then, yeah, and then he, he sort of stepped away from that maybe a couple of weeks ago, just, you know, time pressure getting in the way and it was hard. Uh, I think, to keep it's momentum going. it's uh, complicated there yeah. too because uh, uh, WP governance project wasn't endorsed by no. WordPress.org. No, that, there, was it, a, it, there was a moment at WordCamp Europe where I think they were sort of asked somebody asked them to leave the contributor room or something. I just can't seem to remember the story. Really? Yeah. Oh, dear. It's, um, what, it's but what, what I'd be interested in, Vlad, is what is, yeah. and this is not for, for this thing, but I'd like you to think about it. I'll maybe have a chat with you later, but what's the solution? Yeah. You know, with something so vast, you do not have to have control mechanisms within that. And those control mechanisms are the, the, the people that push the button and say, okay, well, this is, this is now going on to release candidate. We're testing this, and then we're doing that. So you still have to have that kind of level of control because we don't want to break WordPress beyond repair, do we? And that's the, that's the key. We've got if we've got a third of the ten million top, and this is the the clarity around, you know, um, WordPress powers a third of the web. It doesn't. It powers a third of the top ten million websites out there. Yeah. So that's the that's the key. So there's seventy percent of the web is open to anybody else currently you know so we've we got to get you know it's honest marketing isn't it we've got to be we got to have clarity around the actual reach of wordpress wordpress doesn't doesn't power a third of the web it powers a third of the top 10 million websites or whatever it is um there's there's the, that phrasing so there are a, a, other alternatives there must be there's 70 percent other alternatives you know um, not, uh, not uh, in the open web. 
because yeah, gov- we have a lot of closed source. So Shopify, yeah, exactly. Squarespace, Wix, Weekly, Weebly. Exactly, but you know, Wix is minus one percent of the of the web. You know, or you know, and growing. It is. <laughs> it is growing, but it's not. You know, it's been around as long, if not longer, than than uh, WordPress. But it's a uh, it's a conversation that is almost impossible to have because of the segregation, if you like, of all the different aspects of automatic that then then f- f- uh, flow down into WordPress.org. Yeah. Um, you know, WordPress as a word is copyrighted. By the foundation. Exactly. So, you know, it's is that right? One in that I kind of feel that the, you know, the, the idea of open source, although in our own lifetime is quite uh, an, an old thought in in the in the march of history it's a really new thought and and i still think we're trying to work it out and you know when when open source things like linux and wordpress initially started going back 30 40 whatever number of years nobody i think knew that it that people would coalesce it always felt like the the corporates were going to win microsoft was going to win linux was going to be wiped out it was just going to go that way and it didn't it went this way instead, and and I I don't really know what the answer is. But to speak to to sort of the point that Vlad made and that Peacha um, made, I think in the comments that um, it fe- it does to some extent, I suppose the, the argument would go that the own the only people that can contribute realistically and meaningfully to a project of the size of WordPress are the people who can afford to. So the people who have got the money to send 10 delegates off to that conference or, or, you know, second somebody over there to to fulfill this aspect. Whereas, uh, like you said, Vlad, 90% of the committers to Gothenburg are working with an automatic. I'm guessing many of those are seconded and are paid for that time. So it's just difficult. I'm not saying I'm not saying I disagree with that or I agree with it. I'm being a perfectly liberal sit on the fence, absolutely hopeless host. But there you go. Um, Yeah. It's just an interesting debate. It's going to go on, but it, at the minute, it feels like the the corporate side automatic is is you know there's a definite imbalance, and for the first time, people like um, Morton are sticking their head above the parapet and saying, "Okay, maybe this needs a bit of a rethink if we're going to claim eighty percent of the web." But yeah, get. I mean, watch Open Dot Film if you get. Yeah, a, you know, if you can put a link on it, Open Dot Film. It's quite. Interesting, it was, and it was done by Word Fence Mark Morden, Morden's yeah. um, uh, situation, and, and I was lucky enough to go to his event as well. So it was mm. uh, it's an interesting uh, thirteen minutes, which Matt played at the beginning of his keynote. So yeah, um, oh, I wish to, I did have the answer though. I wish I and to, to balance the open dot film that uh, I sort of dislike. Right. Uh, big, uh, to balance it, watch uh, DHH from uh, Basecamp. Uh, DHH's talk on uh, a Ruby keynote. Yep. Um, he he talks about the the fact that open source is not uh, a common, in the sense that we fell down trees and we run out of trees and we need to plant some more, because code can be infinitely duplicated. So it's not the same logic that Matt tries to to push forward that you need to put uh, back when you take something. So it's it's a complicated talk yeah. and subject. It is complicated. This is from RailsComp 2019. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I believe 2017 or 18. You can find it on, on Google. It's... Uh, uh, I believe it has the tragedy of the commons in the title or something. Uh, it's a, it's a very good talk by by DHH. Uh, that that's the guy that uh, spoke with. Yeah, was, that, that's that's the guy that spoke with Matt. And if you listen yeah, to that podcast, yeah. I think he lost. Who? Uh, there needs uh, to be another DHS. round for that one. We, that's that right. One. We need uh, we yeah, need probably. another round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like the, far uh, enough. It, <laughs> Yeah, Matt, uh, yeah, Matt did some amazing moves to deflect, like you said. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. it, you couldn't really nail it in a short form of one hour. I don't think. No, there, there, there's going to be a return match. I think. Well, so. hopefully, DHS DHH H. will be a little bit more prepared. I don't think he was as prepared for. You know, we all we we all appreciate Matt and know know what he's like and know that he deflects and kind of you know 
stuff like that. And I don't think DHH was prepared for that. Kind well, he just swore a lot level. of time that happened, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, that level of deflection. <laughs> you, you need your sophistry skills highly polished. If you and, you know, Matt didn't thing. swear once. No. You know, DHH, D, 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 I can't even say his name or his initials. DHH, you know, was just angry, swearing, just angry. Yeah, and that's interesting. You know, that's not the way to have a an open discussion, really. No. Right, we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Speaking of open discussions, that's the end of that one. Um, we'll uh-huh. move on and talk about something else. I feel like there's a whole load of stuff that we normally talk about, but because we spent an extended period of time on that one, I'm just gonna very quickly say a couple of these things. If you're using Toolset with um, Divi, just go and check it out because the Divi 4 update has broken Toolset views. That's an important thing that you need to know. The guys at Toolset are saying that they've, in some way, into the guys at Divi have in some way interfered with the loop. And this has broken it. So go back to Divi 3 if that's affecting you. Um, I know that Vlad wanted to talk about this one. This one's kind of passed me by. I haven't really installed this or checked it out, but this could be quite an important story. Uh, Google releases its SiteKit WordPress plugin out of beta. Have you um, have you been playing with this? Oh, look at these things. They just keep coming. Um, have you been playing with this and had a go with it? Does it meet your expectations, Vlad? I have uh, played with it uh, a bit, but uh, it's quite simple in uh, in its uh, meaning. It, it basically pulls some analytics, uh, simpler analytics data into your dashboard. So it's uh, plus some light speed and the page speed the numbers so people can, uh, uh, I don't know, get a reading of their site performing in the eyes of Google. Yeah. Uh, That's- I was just going to say it's and, interesting that Google, uh, you know, bothered to write something for WordPress. Um, I'm, I'm guessing not so uh, 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 surprised because uh, ever since Berlin, Google has been a major sponsor by yes. far. In uh, since in, Serbia, since yeah, Serbia, yeah, Belgrade, Bel- Belgrade. Sorry. Uh, so, but I'm. I don't know. Do we want Google to? to enter the, the WordPress space in this manner? I, uh, th- that's a question I uh, uh, popped up in my head when I saw this uh, this plugin and the Google AMP plugin and the uh, Google sponsor. So I It certainly uh, makes it an easy default, doesn't it? Got a new yeah, client, yeah, stick yeah. a Google page, What what isn't it even called? Uh, site kit, just stick yeah. it in because it just does the job. Don't think about another alternative. Don't worry about, you know, uh, all yeah. the self-hosted versions just whack this in and you're good to go yeah yeah i can see it I, I remember going being at wordcamp in europe and being overwhelmed by the size of the google presence there actually it was i mean i think yeah. they had the biggest booth along with maybe one or two more and it, and it did for me it, it painted a picture of them firmly placing their flag in the sand you know yeah, it's, the, it's the same in the us as well nathan yeah. they had yeah. the biggest booth definitely okay. Well, they got the biggest pockets, and they're presumably courting the biggest CMS. I mean, it makes perfect sense. If I was Google, I'd be doing the same thing. But interesting point, Vlad. Do we want this? Hmm. Well, it remains to be seen. It always feels to me like convenience comes before conscience. You know, you just it's convenient. Doesn't matter what the uh, what what the sort of the uh, the, the the back side of it it's is. Very philosophical of you, Nathan. Thank you. I once a year during the month of November, I offer. Crazy, something I've written that down. Time. Yeah, that's it. It's gone. That's the, I've forgotten what I said. <laughs> but but nothing of interest will come out of my mouth for another twelve months. Uh, more that's twice on one site um what else have we got what else have we got the dns you can manage your dns inside of wordpress now i i don't know if i want to do that in all honesty but you can do it with if you click on that link with key press it's going to race through these da, 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 da. you again vlad vlad you're like a really well prepared guest this is fabulous um, it's my first time so uh, yeah, i want yeah, to yeah. do a good um, impression this is good. I quite like this. Um, automatic image alt tags and more with image SEO plugin. Uh, I, I re- I'm going to say it again. I love that Justin Tadlock is now writing for WP Tavern. I think he's got the he's got the ability to write in clear, nice, easy to read English, but he's also got the what's the code like bit. 
And yeah, here we go. How well does the plugin work? And if you go a bit further, he always does. How does the code stack up? And I quite like that bit as well. <laughs> what did you make of this? Is this the sort of thing you're going to put in? Do you want to? Okay, I'll explain. This service looks at the image, tries to work out what's in the image, and then fill in the alt tags based upon what it sees. So if it sees a picture of a cat in a bucket, it'll say, this is a picture of a cat in a bucket. This picture that you can see on the screen, it thought was very dark water art. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's a work in progress, but I'm not going to pay for this. I will happily spend the four seconds it takes me to write corridor with two people at the end or whatever. But, you know, if you've got a massive team of content writers, could be good. Vlad? Yeah, and that's my my take on it, too. Um, for small sites, it's uh, I, I don't think it's uh, that useful. But uh, especially if you have a, a, a huge library of already posted articles and, uh, I don't know, a huge network, and you want to automate uh, some uh, SEO optimization, uh, that th this is a, a decent alternative to, yeah. to having alt tags to images. And uh, it's... Uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of kind of neat that uh, the the machine learning stuff has reached such a maturity that you can basically plug it in and it does the work. So the the plugin itself does. It's not very, I don't know, high end or uh, uh, yeah, complicated. And yeah. Uh, I know what you mean. The 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 true SEO image plugin is the plugin which figures out by reading your content what the perfect image is, goes out, finds it, pays for it, puts it on your website, <laughs> and puts the alt tags in. Uh, you'll and, uh, you'll and have press... it next week, Nathan. You'll have it <laughs> yeah, next week. Yeah. It's a great idea. Uh, I'm sure someone uh, Sorry. The, it's just the purpose of the alt tag was really to describe an image in context with the yep. article. Yep. So it's, it's kind of interesting that you know, you can have an image of a dark tunnel or something, and it figures that out. But I'm just reading the on the W3 Schools website the purpose of the alt tag. And the purpose of the alt tag is to describe the image if the image contains information. So if it was a graph, then it should say the image shows profit up 200%, for instance. Or if the image is a link, to uh, a document, then the image alt tag should not say this is a dark, uh, you know, it could be a front cover of a, of a magazine with a picture of a dark tunnel on it. It should say that this, this is a link to the download. And if the image is purely for decoration, like most blog heading yeah, images yeah, yeah. are, then they're supposed to just have an empty alt tag. So obviously the alt tag is used for SEO purposes. So it kind of goes against it feels like SEO and accessibility are fighting each other on this one. And then this plugin is just going to describe a picture of a mountain when probably if it was for SEO, you'd say something, some keyword from your article. And if it was for accessibility, you would have no, nothing. You'd have an empty alt tag because it was purely a nice picture of a mountain like 50% of the articles on the web do have. I think everybody's yeah. going to struggle to get excited about image <laughs> SEO, aren't they? Let's be honest, it's uh, it's not the most glamorous of topics, but there you go. I, hands up who writes one and then just copy and paste it into the description, copy and paste it into the alt, copy and paste it, you know, and just, you know, I do. I do that because it's quicker. Um, but somebody somewhere producing higher quality content than I produce will no doubt find this of interest. But AI taking over the world one piece at a time. Uh, right, okay, self-promotional bit. I'm going to promote the deals page that I've got on WP Builds. It's a little bit shorter than it was because Halloween's come and gone. But if you go to wpbuilds.com forward slash black, you're going to get to this page. And on this page are just a bunch of stuff which are either still on offer. That one's out of date. Look, I've got to remove that one. And um, basically, I'm just saying, you know, in the run up to Black Friday, go to wpbuilds.com forward slash black. And uh, you can you know, do filtering and all of that stuff over here. So there you go. What else have we got to say? Oh, update Chrome. That's a big one this week. If you didn't update Chrome, there were lots of incomprehensibly difficult to understand bugs going on inside of Chrome this week. My Mac updates itself, right? If I switch off the Mac and turn it on the next morning, Chrome is updated. Apparently, People in the Facebook group, the WP Builds Facebook group, said that doesn't happen on Windows. I'm surprised. 
it happens only when you go to uh, settings and then it will auto update. Interesting. So if you go to your three dots within um, Chrome and then go to settings and Google Chrome needs updating, it will auto update as soon as you go onto the settings page. Okay, that's good to know. That's what happened okay. on three of my Windows computers. Okay, okay. I, I just switched it on and, and read the article and then checked the version number of Chrome and it was identical and I'd done nothing. So I said, it'll probably automatically update itself. Uh, look at this, Paul. You get in a bit of a, a hat tip from Peter who says, glad Paul mm -hmm. mentioned the purpose of alt tags. It really isn't for SEO, it's well, for accessibility. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to say, everyone Still should experience their th sites Open. through a screen reader. Oh, and then back on Chrome, you've got to do it manually on Linux. I think you could say that sentence about anything to do with Linux, couldn't you? You've <laughs> got to do it manually on Linux, but that's why we like it, because you've got to do it manually on Linux. Um, what else have we got? Let's have a quick look. I don't really want to go into the security stuff particularly, but I will say that if you've got the GiveWP plugin installed, I think it's like 60,000 installations of that, go and get that checked out. Broken link checker plugin has got a problem. I updated it via main WP, and that's what that article is about. And then these are the iThemes and WebArcs websites, which just sum up. Just, just to, just, I'll show you why I like these. I like these web pages because they show. He said, as it doesn't load, they show the plugin thumbnails, so you can just go like that. Scrolly, 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 scroll. Ooh, recognize? Actually, I don't. But you know, recognize that one. Go update. I like that. Um, we did a podcast this week all about riding to Ber from Berlin to Portugal. That's the WP and Op thing that I'm doing with uh, Dan Maybe and Carol Ollinger. We're going to be going to WordCamp Europe on bikes. And that's kind of all I've got, unless you guys have got something you want to add. Oh, no, it's not. Look at this. I've not I've got any experience with this, but Vlad apparently does. This is Ghost 3.0. Should we get rid of WordPress, do you reckon, Vlad, and just go with Ghost? It's a CMS. It's a tentative, so to speak. Oh. Uh, uh, it's refreshing to, to play with Ghost when you play with WordPress for the, for the past 10 years. <clears throat> it's uh, they, they are doing a, a hell of a job. So uh, the, uh, uh, starting with the structure of the company, a nonprofit with no shares, forever so uh I, I believe the the founders are british i believe although it's uh incorporated in singapore i don't know. so uh but they uh they had a vision and they pursued it i don't know with just perfectly from my point of view and now with uh, 3.0 they've introduced the e-commerce side of things uh, in the core, so uh, members and subscription, they are focused on uh, on content. So they are for publishers, for people that write. No, uh, they are not uh, trying to compete with WordPress, the WordPress of today. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I really like uh, Ghost, and uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's still PHP at uh, at uh, at its core. Of course, the front end is uh, uh, JavaScript, but uh, it's it's a really good alternative uh, for for people that uh, are mostly into writing. So they've raised give five it a go. million dollars. That's not yeah, anything to yeah. surprise, is it? That's quite a lot of money. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and there we go. without uh, uh, giving a share of the company, so those five millions are strictly from their users. So no uh, investors there. Wow! So uh, we, we get back to the debate we had forty minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. Can I ask a question, Nathan, of hmm. Vlad? Yeah, yeah. Are you, going, are you going to be building themes for this for Ghost? I am considering it, but uh, right now I I am not sure because right. they are quite small. So the, there are some teams that are free and uh i i'm not sure the the ecosystem is there to to be viable for commercial teams uh it wasn't there when wordpress first started so get in now yeah good point <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 
Uh, so join us next week <clears throat> on the ghostbuilds.com website. <laughs> or, uh, uh, yeah. No, uh, following on from the WordPress bashing theme of this particular episode, <laughs> there, is, there is another article that um, Vlad did uh, recommend, which is the one about the auto updates. Oh, yes, please. Let's go for that quickly. Uh, yeah, it might be just because it, it repeats a lot of the stuff we've already said. And because uh, we heard, you know, the previous article that we mentioned was Morton um, Rand Hen Hendrickson. You got it. And then this one is by Heather Burns. Heather Burns. I love yeah. Heather Burns. Well, yeah. So if you, if you, if you read uh, Morton's article and, you know, he seems quite frustrated, Heather's absolutely furious in this yes. one. <laughs> so much so that you don't even get what she's talking about without clicking on a couple of links. So, Nathan, on that screen that you've got there, the best way to kind of find out uh if you go to the this? top there and then there's a link at the top um there's this week's pan scheduled panel this one yeah click on that one uh pop that one open and then from there click on that link that says the recent conversations in wordpress core and you'll find out what she's talking about which is this suggestion about that um wordpress will start forcing upgrades on old versions of wordpress yeah you hack their security and heather is saying in her article that this is actually completely uh, i think she says freaking illegal yeah she does yeah it's illegal. totally illegal yeah <laughs> and the problem is is that the the law does state that you should push sub uh you can push security updates to users as long as they are exclusively security updates. So because you get with WordPress bundled all the feature updates, the problem is, and you can see it in the thread on this WordPress core discussion, if you just type in, you know, if you were to visit that article and search in page for the word legal, you'll start seeing all the, um, the problems with this idea in terms of the, you may be pushing a security update, but you might be breaking a million dollar business website at the same time. So that's that's an she's another voice who is very frustrated that she is from time to time asked to to speak on this, but is possibly getting asked less and less these days because her views are not what the team potentially want to hear. Same with Morton. Yeah, I think without going into detail, I think she's had a pretty rough time of it um, in various respects. Uh, and I, I like her. I like the way she speaks. I like the way she. I like the way she thinks. Um, mm. And we've got a podcast episode with her in about in a few weeks time. I recorded one with her um, and she she makes a lot of sense to me. And but she's got swimming against the tide and the tide is jolly hard to stop, I'd say. But I, I think her heart is in the right place. She wants to protect us all. But sometimes that comes at the expense of convenience and it comes at the expense of uh, things that we've become used to. But I think a lot of the things we've become used to, we didn't know we were becoming used to and didn't sign up for. So anyway, I like her. She is very outspoken and she is very brave, Peacher. Um, I would completely agree. Yeah, she sounds almost ready to just say, do you know what? Forget this. I'm done. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think I think she's got more fight. I'm sure she won't. But... Yeah, yeah. I think it's more like, um, well, the opposite. I'm going to get you. You know, yeah, maybe. Out how to do it. <laughs> yeah. So, Ghost 3.0, like you say, that's the answer yeah. to all our problems. I think. That's it. Let's get it some look cool. moving on. Let's just all go to Ghost. I'll register the domain name and I'll see you here next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of next week, I think that probably is all that we've got time for, sadly. I've really enjoyed this conversation. It's been wide ranging and really interesting. We don't, we don't manage to get through to everything. I think it's been decided largely by Paul um, last week because he did such a great job that rather than trying to do all the little tiny little stories, we'll go a bit more like this in the future and sort of deep dive into particular subjects. I'm sorry that I'm never looking at the camera. I could look at the camera in my old view, but now it's all done on a browser. So I have to look over there. I haven't a way around that. If I look over here, you'll see me recursively looking at myself forever. And um, so that's it. I would like to say a big thank you to my guests. Uh, so we've got Vlad from Pixel Grade, we've got Paul Lacey from the Dickie Bird Studio, and we've got Andrew Palmer from, I'll go for the first one, Page Builder Cloud, but we've got Elegant Marketplace as well. In order, uh, Paul, I'll go with you first. What's happening this week? Have you read any good books? Anything you want to say? Go for it. 
No, I'm just getting on with work and carrying on playing The Witcher 3. Yes, that's that. the same as same, same as, as every week, week basically. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Vlad? Friends, though, quite honestly. Yeah, so, need to be thankful try. though. When it dries up, you'll be moaning about that. So yeah, I will. Yeah. yeah. It's keeping me off Facebook, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. My wife would say to me, "This is worse than your phone." <laughs> <laughs> oh. What about you, Vlad? Anything exciting happening this week? Mm, no, sadly, just work, 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 and uh, getting stuff done. So. Yeah, the world. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good yeah. thing. Uh, so, well, thanks for joining us for the first time. I hope you come back and do it again with us. You're I welcome. really yeah. like that. Yeah. It's good fun. Yeah. And uh, Andrew, anything happening? You're obviously coming back on the plane to the UK. We hope. Oh, yeah, I arrived back on Tuesday morning, which is tomorrow um, at 8 a.m. And I have a day of rest. And then I'm looking after my friend's estate agency. So I'm going to be an estate agent for about <laughs> eight days while he goes off and gets married. I know, weird, right? What? But why not? <laughs> He's got an internet connection. I can still work from there. It's great. So, <laughs> from being a. Uh, That's so Why good. not? I've never That's been the state agent before. I might as well give it a go. <laughs> oh, be good. Be oh, do you know what would be so good if you totally killed it? And you came back he, and he, he says, like, if you sold... sell any houses, I'll kill you. <laughs> I've sold them all. Because <laughs> you'll have to pay me. <laughs> Well, on that bombshell, uh, that really is a bit of a bombshell. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. I can finally look at the camera. Appreciate it. Come and join us next week. We'll do it all again. And, uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Thanks so much, guys. Take it easy. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.